All right. Welcome into this week at the Gridiron Icon podcast. I am really excited to have a special guest on this week because we don't give enough love to these guys as fans, as people who watch the game of football. We got an offensive lineman in here and not just an offensive lineman, but a guy that is coaching up our next generation of offensive linemen, which is just good stuff. So my quick bio rundown on my guest Former University of Central Florida offensive lineman, including all ACC second team, all conference USA second team, and all freshman team honors. Freshman folks, right out of high school. Also played for the Detroit Lions, New England Patriots, and had a really cool, unique experience with the Orlando Predators of the Arena League. But more importantly, as of today, Under Armour All-American offensive line coach, currently coaching up our next generation as the CEO of Crafting Lineman. I have with me offensive lineman and CEO, Torian Wilson. How you doing, man? Man, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, it's going to be a fun one. Yeah, we're going to have we're going to have a good time. I have I, I have kind of a soft spot for the offensive lineman. I don't have enough of them on this show. I think that we I mean, come on. They're people too. Where's the love? Without those guys, nothing is happening on a football field. And I mean nothing. Not at all. Not at all. You know, we are we are the heartbeat of the team. Absolutely. I, I mean, you probably don't want to hear me on game day, but I'm like constantly throwing this around the room and everybody's like, shut up. Just give me a fast wide receiver. I'm like, ah, don't matter. We got to have those big guys up front. So thanks for coming on here. We want to unpack just how important you are and learn all about what you're doing for our next generation of guys that are blocking for the guys that get all the headlines. But but first, tell us about you. Take us back just a little bit. You're you're a young guy still, younger than me. I mean, look at this hair. I'm out. <laughs> you're a young guy who's doing big things with his own company and a great background. But take us back to being a kid. Did you Was football your first love or did you have another favorite sport? Tell us about that. Uh, I mean, to be honest, when I was younger, I really didn't want to play sports at all. It, it didn't come, yeah, it didn't come until eighth grade. Um, you know, I'm sitting at home and, you know, I'm just watching, you know, watching TV and, and just watching uh, different highlights and things like that. And, um, you know, all of a sudden I see a highlight of um, um, uh, from the Dallas Cowboys uh, back in the day. Oh, uh, like uh, Nate Newton or Nate Newton. Oh, so how I do see, you know that? <laughs> man, so I see a highlight of Nate Newton, right? So I, I, I look to, you know, I look to my parents. I'm like, I want to play football. Let's go, right? Nice. So this is eighth grade. Never played any sports. Um, so wow. you know my, you know my parents was like, okay, listen, we can, you know, we'll allow you to play football, but you know, it's a tough sport. You know, we know you haven't played any uh, any sports, and it's it's tough. So you have to be willing to go through it. You're gonna have some hard times. You're gonna have some easy days, but you have to push through it no matter what. So I said, okay, let's do it. So um, eighth grade, you know, I'm I'm traveling to all these different uh, youth leagues because at the time, you know, big kids wasn't allowed to play. Um, so you had a weight limit. Wow. And yeah, so. You know, I'm traveling, traveling, traveling. So all, all of these different teams are telling me, uh, oh, you can't play, you're too big, you're too big. Um, so I come across uh, a flyer that said, big boys are allowed. So um, we, we literally had to travel every day from practice about 40 minutes to go to practice because that was the only league that allowed big boys to play. Wow. Um, yeah, so, you know, and, I, and I'm thankful for it. So to be... So to make a long story short, you know, I get to practice my first day. First day I wanted to quit. I said, wow. this, was, this was tough. I say, this is tough. This is nothing that I've been through. And it, it wasn't necessarily the hidden part. It was just, it was really the conditioning part. You know, I'm, I'm fresh off the, off the couch. You know, I, I haven't really conditioned, never ran a lot or any of that stuff. So uh, first day I wanted to quit, you know, I, I, to this day, man, I, I, I thank God that my parents didn't allow that. You know, that was something that they said, listen, you told me from the beginning that you wanted to play, so you're going to finish out this year. If you don't want to wow. play anymore after this year, then that's fine, but this year you will finish. And uh, so I appreciate that because ever since then, you know, I, I've 
I've grown to love the game. Wow, man. I mean, there's a lesson right there for young players, man. You make the commitment. It's Football's the greatest team game. I mean, mm -hmm. kudos to your parents for making mm -hmm. you see it through. So this big boy thing, I mean, God, we've got scouts scouring the nation looking for big boys. <laughs> yeah, I know. But it, but at that age, they're like, you're like too big to play with these kids. How big exactly. were you like around that time in your life? You were eighth grade when you started playing. How big were you at that point? Yeah. So so eighth grade, I was about 250. Oh. 250. Yeah. So I was oh, about you would have scared me to death. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So at, at the time, you know, the biggest that you can play, uh, if I'm not mistaken, was 165. What? Yeah, so the one lead that allowed big boys, you know, to be unlimited, um, you know, we, we finally found them. Now, you know, nowadays, kids can be any size and play at, at any level, yeah. at the youth level. So Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that. My uh, Even when I was in Pop Warner as a kid all those centuries ago, and my kid, <laughs> uh, they had weight limits back then. Yeah, I mean, I had yeah. really forgotten about that. So. You're playing in this big boy league. Is this like the SEC of eighth graders? Was like every kid your size? Or were you still like a just gigantic? Yeah. So at the time, this you you can say this was the SEC of uh youth football. <laughs> you can definitely say that because you know everyone in the league was had big boys. And if you didn't have big boys, you you know, you was getting demolished pretty much. Um, so it really was a good league. Um as far as with the big boys and the skill players, because your skill players can be, you know, true skill players. So they didn't have to be uh, 120, 140. They can be 200 pounds, you wow. know. So, yeah, yeah. Good grief, man. <laughs> right. I mean, Florida, right? I mean, listen, we all know if you follow football on any level, whether it's high school, college, pros, Florida is a hotbed. I mean, hotbed. So you come from really – the number one football state in the country. Although I'm sure the people in Texas are throwing things at the podcast right now, but right. come on, <laughs> Florida is loaded across the board. So, so you roll up, you're like just a normal kid, never played mom and dad make you commit. Did you want to be an offensive lineman or were you thinking, look, I'm a running back, man, but you already said you saw Nate Newton. So maybe you were like, I want a road grade. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to, to be honest, I, um, you know, I knew the game, I, but I didn't know the strategic part of it. I didn't know, okay, you had to be a certain weight to play this position. You had to – so, you know, I, 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 I did want to be a lineman. I didn't know whether or not wow. I wanted to be a defensive lineman or offensive lineman. That part I wasn't sure of, you know, until I got out there and then I realized, okay, offensive line is where I am, is where I want to be. Wow, that's wild because I'm going to get to it, but I know you played both ways as you got older. I mean, you were playing on both lines – both sides of the line of scrimmage. Wow, man. So, okay, you roll up practice. You're playing with the big boy, the big boy league. That sounds funny to say, but I can just imagine what that looked like. Guys bigger than me at my age. <laughs> but uh, did you just roll out of bed and you were good at this? And and I know that you're coaching up a lot of young guys now, but what do you tell them? I mean, you, you didn't just roll up to your first practice in eighth grade and you're like, oh, God, look at my footwork and my hands. I'm just – I'm good at this. What, did it come easy for you? Um. It didn't come. It didn't come easy, but I've always, even without playing, um, I've always been somewhat athletic, um, and I think that's what made it a little easier for me. Um, but it took a lot of hard work to to get to be an offensive lineman. You know, it you don't you don't just roll out of bed and just say, okay, I'm offensive lineman. I'm just naturally good at it. Some you have very few that do. Yeah, you have very few. But um, to answer your question, I feel like most offensive linemen, you have to build an uh, offensive lineman because most of us don't want to play offensive line. You know, a lot yeah. of them, a lot of them want to play D line. A lot of them think they're a skill player. So you have to yeah. kind of build them and, and encourage them, and then allow them to understand why it's important for you to play offensive line and why you sh would be a great offensive lineman. Yeah, and then you then you show them that uh, left tackle salary in the first round of the NFL draft. <laughs> right. <laughs> Take a look at the left <laughs> tackle salaries. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. Wow, man. I mean, do you think we take that for granted for fans? Like people think offensive linemen are just big, strong dudes that just roll out of bed and they just block like it's all easy. People don't appreciate the skill involved. Well, not everybody, but but most fans. I mean, do you find that? People are like, oh, I don't get all this. Fun. They, they watch Aaron Donald, you know, take an offensive lineman apart or something. And they think, oh, that guy's just big and strong. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny. You know, um, sometimes you hear fans uh, say, what? Like, how hard is it to block this guy? Like, why can't – all you have to do is just stay in front of him. And I, I just look at fans a lot of times and, and I say, if only you just knew. If only, <laughs> if only we can just get you out there and just put on the pad so you can actually see that it, it's a tough, very tough position because think about it. Offensive line is the most – unorthodox position out there besides DB. Everything that we're doing is going backwards. And we're being asked to stop a 290 to 310 pound Divas attack or Divas at end from coming full force at us in a sprinter position. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very tough. So you have to think about all the different techniques you have to learn, all the different muscles you have to train to make sure that we're able to absorb those blow and deliver a blow as well. It, I tell you, man, it, it, I don't know if it just takes age or people who really love the game, but I, your point is well spoken. How how in the world can anybody look at offensive linemen? You're getting attacked every play. Every, every Quarterbacks don't play. get attacked every play. Running back doesn't get attacked. Offensive tackle, guard, center of the center, getting pounded on. Every, I look at Andrew Whitworth, you're 40 playing this mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. How do you pull that off, man? I mean, yeah. that is, yeah, no, it's a great point. Exactly why I want to have someone like you telling us all about it right. <laughs> on the show. Well, what else did you like doing as a kid? Like you said, you didn't, you weren't really into sports. Was there other stuff in your generation, your age group that you were really into? Uh, I mean, to be honest, man, I was just really a laid back kid. Um, you know, cool. obviously I like, I like the normal, you know, just hanging out with my friends, going outside. You know, doing doing the normal kid stuff. Um, you know, playing football in the road, things like that. Um, but you know, not really into just a bunch of different sports. You know, growing up, I did uh, try uh, track, uh, shot put. I tried that for a little while oh, uh, while in high school. Yeah. Um, you know, it didn't, it didn't work out um, the way I wanted to. You know, because that's a whole nother technique as well. Yeah. You know, and it's and it's really particular, you know, when it comes to the uh, the the technique and things like that. But in my opinion, I feel like offensive linemen, if you can shot put, if you can do discus, uh, wrestle, any of those different sports, man, like you see the difference in those guys than a lot of other offensive linemen. Yeah, they're just kind of well well balanced, mm -hmm. diversified. Wow, that's exactly. something, man. So did you play then as you as we start looking at your life at Central Florida? Did you play any other sports outside of football? Were you a hoopster? Did you play basketball, wrestle, do anything? I mean, your size, I'm guessing the high school coaches were just all over you. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, no, uh, you know, like I said, I, I tried uh, sports while I was uh, track and field while I was in uh, high school. Okay, uh, that was it. The shot put. Yeah, but, you know, that, that was really it because I was so – um, I, I felt like I was kind of behind when it came to football, you know, me starting late. So I was so locked in and just being the best player that I can be. And, you know, it, it turned out to be very well because in high school, you know, I was an All-American, Under Armour All-American, you know, the Trouble. number eight, yeah, the number eight guard coming out in the, um, in the country. So, you know, I, I felt like I had to really lock into football because I was so behind. Yeah, you beat me to it. Number eight guard coming out of high school, people. Uh, that's really something for a guy, really inspiring for a kid or a young guy now listening to this going, I'm coming to this game late. I don't even know what it is. You know, and you're being humble because you watch offensive line and you were in the NFL and the Arena League and an All-American in college. What they ask offensive linemen now to do now compared to my generation when I was a kid, like in the 70s, you guys are out like running traps and pulling guards like you guys are sprinting downfield with running backs <laughs> yeah it's it's crazy how athletic a lot of these guys are so even, like okay so i came out you know i'm a lot young i'm, I'm younger right so even yeah. with my generation the game is different now you know it's evolving on a daily basis every year it is evolving you seeing these guys come to the combine and it's getting faster and faster yeah. every single year. So imagine what the game is going to be like in three to five years. Like these guys are going to be out here just running track meets, you know, some of these offensive linemen. It's not – I mean, 
the NFL Combine. I'm a I'm a junkie, as you could tell. I watched you uh, doing through some of those processes. I scouted and did all that kind. Of, well, I, a closet scouted. I'm not a pro, but I mean, God, there's guys running sub five second forties now that are I'm like. What? I want, I'm a 180 pound corner. I want nothing to do with this. Like, At all. At nothing. All. <laughs> they're still backpedaling. They're, they're like, ah, oh, no, I thought he was running a fly pattern. I'm just going to keep right. going. <laughs> yeah, man. And it, I, I'm just amazed. And I feel like there just isn't enough love or a spotlight on our offensive linemen. And for the people who are students of the game, they, they know, they absolutely know how important you guys are. So, okay. So you, from high school, get a late start. You were the number eight guard coming out. You choose Central Florida, a hotbed of town. I don't care where you go to school in Florida. You're a stud. That's yeah. anybody in football knows that. You go on and and have success your first year. I mean, as a freshman, how did you bet? What was that like for you? Even now understanding you got a late start to football, you got to balance the student life and the finances and all that. How did you do that? And what do you tell your your young guys that may ask you that now? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you know, you go to college with a with a plan. You know, that's that's the biggest thing. You know, yes, you want to have fun, you want to enjoy your college life. I'm not saying don't do that, but have a plan. You know, understand what do you want to get out of this. You know, if your goal or your objective is to make it to the NFL, write a plan together and put down bullet points on how can you get there. What do you need to do? Okay, take care of your body. Okay, make sure you're getting extra film. Make sure you're going to talk to the nutritionist. Make sure you're going to talk to your coaches. Make sure you're, you're taking study hall, going to your tutors, whatever the case may be, because, yes, you, you make sure that you do what you have to do on the field, but the classroom is just as important, actually more important, because if you don't do what you do, if you don't do what you're supposed to do in the classroom, you can't do what you're supposed to do on the field. So the biggest thing is just being with the right people, uh, getting with the right circle, you know, I was I was uh, I was blessed to have the right circle around me um, wow. at the time. You know, it was my girlfriend then, but now my wife, you know, oh, she. Right. Yeah. So she was she always made sure that, you know, I, I was in order. And the good thing about it, too, is that <laughs> she was a student athlete. So, oh. we both, yeah. So we both understood what we had to get done. You know, we understood each other's objective and then um, we made sure that we got it done. Mm -hmm. Wow. That says a lot about your parents too, man, uh, but you and your wife, like mm -hmm. that just stuff doesn't come natural to a young kid. So you're, you were on campus, you were, you were there. Uh, I think what blows my mind is you were one of those guys that that's like Swiss army knife. You played some tackle. I mean, you talk a lot about yeah. your guard days mm -hmm. and whatnot, but you played some tackle. What, what was that like? I mean, you jumped from high school as a stud and then you're jumping into the college ranks now and they're kind of moving you around a little bit. You're that guy on the offensive line. How did you deal with that? What do you tell these young guys that, that come to crafting linemen? And what do you tell them about that tackle position? Yeah, man. I mean, in, in my opinion, um, you know, tackle, I was a left tackle too. So yeah. that, was, that, was, that was one of the hardest positions, man, because – you know, you're you're protecting the blind side. You know, you your quarterback does not see it coming. If you, you know, let it let up a sack or whatever the case may be, your guy gets past you. But um, you have to be super athletic, and it, it's crazy because my whole career in at, at UCF, I played tackle, so I never played yeah. anything else but tackle at UCF. Oh, they never uh, kicked you inside. I thought that they kicked you inside every now and then. My bad. Okay. No, no. All so, tackle. Wow. All tackle. Only, only spring. So, my my senior year um, during the spring is the only time I played guard. During wow! Mm -hmm. You had the feet. Let's be honest. Yes. Okay. Yes, I did. I did. I did. Wow! But wow! You know, to, and and to be honest, to to tell like all my younger guys, I tell them all the time when recruiters, especially my high school guys, when recruiters come in and, and they ask you what position do you play, you play offensive line. I don't not want to hear you say, I play left tackle. I play left guard. I play center. Do not put yourself in a box. You play offensive line. Because if that coach is not looking for a left tackle, but he's looking for a guard, he just scratched you off. But now if I say, okay, coach, I play offensive line. Where do you need me to play? I can play anywhere you need me to play. Guess what that coach is going to say? Oh, he's coachable. We want oh, him Oh, my God. That's a big nugget. Mark that for 
highlight on this podcast. That is such good advice for a young guy. I'm not a left guard. I'm not a left tackle. I'm an offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. And you see this, right? You see it at the NFL level. You see in college too, but at the NFL level, these guys, somebody gets hurt and they're moving them all over the offensive line. Yeah. You only I mean, travel with eight guys in the NFL. So you have yeah. to be able to play multiple positions. Man, alive is that incredible, Torian. Jeez, that's such a great tidbit for a young kid uh, who needs to visit crafting linemen. I mean, that is amazing. So right attitude, surround yourself with the best people you can. In your case, you were lucky and found a, a beautiful woman and married her. Uh, but make sure you're being smart about what you're doing. Any other advice for a young guy? Because I tell you what, there's there's tons of podcasts of people talking about running backs and wide receivers. Mm -hmm. what do you, any other advice for a young kid who's out there going, look, I'm a bigger kid. I want to play some offensive line. Anything he should really be honed in on as he get he starts looking at college? Yeah, so if he if he's looking for college, um, do not shut anyone out. Make sure that you have an open mind to whoever reaches out to you because you never know where that coach might be by the time you get to your senior yeah. year. So you never want to burn bridges, you know, because a lot of times you have a lot of guys who, you know, they, they might not see a school or a school might reach out to them and they might not like the school. That's fine. But still make sure that you don't burn that bridge because that coach won't be there forever. You know, he might be at, he might end up at your dream school. So make sure you keep that connection. Make sure you uh, you network and make sure you um, leave them with a, with a good taste in their mouth because, you know, once they, leave over, trust me, they're going to try to keep the same recruiting class that they were recruiting at that last school and move it over to that new school that they're going to. Wow, man. I mean, is that, you think that's even more so with this whole transfer portal? So all we hear about is the quarterbacks, but anybody can enter the transfer portal, right? Yeah. And it's, yeah. And it's funny. And it's funny with that transfer portal <laughs> um, to, to, to kind of make a couple points about that. For guys that's entering the transfer portal, please let it be a legit reason. You know, don't let it be a reason of competition. You know, do not run away from competition because if you run away from competition now, you're definitely going to run it from competition later. You know, if it's there, if there's a legit reason why you have to transfer, and trust me, there's there are some good legit reasons why, but it has to be a legit reason. Don't just you know, leave just to leave, you know, because you're afraid of competition. You know, uh, I was just talking with a college uh, recruiter yesterday. You know, there's 6,000 names in the transfer portal right now. What? 6,000. 6,000. That can't all be good reasons. Am I right? Not at all. Yeah. Oh, my God. Do you feel like you – I'm going to go all human on you. Uh, you feel like that lesson your parents taught you in eighth grade kind of – comes back into play, you join this, stick with it, unless there's a good reason, follow through on your commitment. Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, that, wow. that taught me right at that at that moment when they told me you won't quit. You might not want to play later, but you won't quit today or this year. You know, that from that point on, it, it stuck with me. So now I can't, I cannot start something and not finish it. I have to finish it. There is no way that I can quit in the middle of it. Man, we need to clone your mom and dad. We, that's a lesson this whole planet needs right now. That is, that's good stuff. I, I can't believe there's 6,000 kids in the transfer portal. My God, that's insane. That's that is insane. Okay. Fo fo folks that are just turning in, we are here with Torian Wilson, who a former NFL offensive lineman, now CEO of Crafting Lineman. And man, are these some great nuggets for young guys and just fans. Uh, you're, you're giving us really good treasure here, my friend. So let's let's move on just to your pro football experience because I think you had a unique experience there. You played for a couple different organizations uh, and, as well as the Arena Football League, which is a whole story probably for a, its own episode. But how, do you, how, did you, how did you like that transition from college to the pro game? Now, you were an undrafted free agent to the Lions, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. You were on the practice squad so you get to be part of all that good stuff uh, it, was there anything that shocked the system going from being such a stud in college and all of a sudden you make the leap to the nfl um i mean the biggest thing was just the speed of the game and okay. just being just being a professional you know you you're you have to understand that it, it is a business you know you coming from college where 
you're around the same players all day, every day. You go to the dorms, you're around them. You know, it's more of a tight nick. Um, but then when you go to the NFL, you know, you're a rookie coming in, you know, you're 22, 23 coming in and you realizing like, okay, this is really a business. You know, these guys come in, do what they have to do, and they go back to their families and, you know, do it all over again tomorrow. Um, so that that was one of the, the things that I had to realize that, you know, you have to treat it as a business. Wow. And yet, so I'm assuming without getting too personal, your wife was with you on this journey. Was that hard on her to kind of move cities and be part of that whole free agency thing? And I always wonder how the families navigate that whole thing. Um, to be honest, I was, yeah, uh, to be honest, I was, I was fortunate, man, because my wife, she, uh, she was in the medical field. So oh, while wow. I was, yeah. So while I was playing, she were, she was doing her, um, different, um, she was stationed at a different, you know, hospital and things like that, you know, getting her, uh, her license and, and, and things like that. So, you know, I was, I was very fortunate because while I was playing, she was actually, you know, still in school at one point and then you know, doing her, uh, her mission and, and things like that. So it, really wasn't, cool. it wasn't too tough. Yeah. It wasn't too tough for her. That's awesome. Well, you, you said that when you guys met, you guys had a plan, you guys are planners. I mean, that's, that's good stuff. So you get to the NFL, you weren't drafted, which for anybody who follows the game knows that means next to nothing anymore because some of the greatest players that ever played this game were not drafted. Was that a disappointment for you? To, to not get drafted, or did you you just jumped right on? The Lions gave you that call. You jumped right in as a free agent and got involved. Uh, to be honest, yeah, it it was disappointing. You know, you play the game, and you know that's a that's a great accolade to add to your uh, your collection, um, especially you know because my my um, my journey was was a little different because I had the opportunity to leave early, so uh. I had the opportunity to lo- to leave as a junior and um, had a high chance of getting drafted you know and I decided to, to come back because of injuries and things like that so um so it definitely you know it definitely hurt um but you know it can only hurt for for so much so you know I it you know I swallowed my pride and all these all these different things and you know uh talk with the Lions and they gave me an opportunity and you know we figured we figured out some things and you know I appreciate the opportunity God it's great man I mean that's again it's probably one of the cool things you share with your with your guys at Crafting Linemen that, look, adversity comes, be ready for it. I mean, it's even for really good football players like you. So so you played for the Lions a little bit. You played for the Patriots. Was there any difference in culture? I, you know, the NFL fans are tuning in right here. What, what was the difference between the Lions and the Patriots? Because you would have you would have been there when Brady was there, right? Yeah, with the Patriots? yeah I was. With, with Tommy? I was. Okay. I was. I was. Uh, yeah, very cool. I mean, it, it it was definitely different. It was definitely different, <laughs> you know. Um, to to be honest, man, the Patriots is a a true business, you know. Very yeah. very business, very structured. Everything has to be in order. Um, you know, it, it, it's not a lot of you know leaks. You know, as far as guys making sure that everyone is staying straight and narrow. You know, if you're if you're a part of the team, everyone is holding you accountable. You know, yeah. there is no there is no one that's you know, if everyone's going right, we all going right. There is no there is no everyone some people go right, some people go left. No, we in this thing together. So, you know, that that's one thing I can say about the Patriots. It was it was definitely tight. Yeah, that's what we we've, we've had several players, probably ex teammates of yours, that have said the same thing. Like, yeah, it's pretty buttoned down. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Things are things are crisp. So, okay, we're going to ask you all the the typical cheesy NFL questions that that every fan wants to know about Torian Wilson. Which is, was there a guy that was really tough to play against in your NFL career, or even your arena career with the Orlando Predators? Was there anybody that really gave you fits having to block him? Yeah, I, um, to be honest. Um, it's two guys, ah. one that one that I play with, which is Chandler Jones. Um, oh, yeah. So Chandler Jones was definitely tough to pra- uh, to practice against, and then another was Jadavion Clowney. Wow, man! That <laughs> maybe you've heard of them. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, two of the biggest just beasts in the NFL today, man. You had to handle both of those guys, Chandler. Both of them still playing. I mean, yes. Yeah. Just crazy, probably 
both of them still would be considered top five or ten pass rushers. Oh, for sure. Dang, Torian Wilson, look at you. That's that's awesome, man. Yeah, so those guys were tough. Oh, tell yeah. us a, tell us about uh, was there a coach or anybody that had a big impact on your career? It doesn't have to be NFL. Was there somebody that just really impacted you? Yeah. Um, to be honest with, with that, man, I have man, I have about five coaches that really impacted wow. me because they they gave me different they gave me different advice and they allowed me to reach different levels in my career. You know, when I when I talk about little league, you know, youth league, you have um one of my coaches, Coach Tony and Coach Richie. And um with with those two guys, if it wasn't for them, you know, aside from my parents, I probably wouldn't be playing football. You wow. know, because they, they were one of the guys who, you know, motivated me to play football and gave me the confidence to play football. And it's, it's funny because uh, once people find out, they was like, that was your coach. So one of my coaches, Coach Richie, which is the youth league, uh, that's Fat Joe, the rapper, cousin and uh, manager. What? So, yeah, that was that was my youth league coach. <laughs> that's incredible. I mean, there's people yeah. who are talking about Snoop Dogg as their youth coach. So, Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so those two had a great impact on my youth uh, on my youth career, and then uh, once I got to high school, uh, Coach Terrence Craig, who, um, who who just took my game to another level, you know, at the high school level, and then um, you talk about college, uh, Coach Brent Key, who's now the offensive line coach at at Georgia Tech, he wow. uh, he took my game to another level while I was in college. And then also uh, Coach Allen Mogridge, who is the offensive line coach at uh, University of South Florida, you know, he he took my – he was at UCF while I was there, um, but he coached tight ends. But he came – he made an impact on my – he's making an impact on my life now as a wow. coach and as a trainer. Yeah, so um, and he's just giving me the courage. He's a guy who I can call at any point for advice or whatever the case may be, you know, sometimes just to talk. Um, and so, yeah, he's, he's definitely making an impact in my life now. I was going to say, I sense that these, these coaches are still a part of your life. Like they're still impacting you. And of course, with what you're doing for young guys. So God, definitely. I love stories like that, man. That's good stuff. Well, okay. So for those watching on YouTube, the sun is going down behind Torian. So <laughs> I promise to have him out of here pretty quick. I want to talk a little bit about your post football, your post pro football career and what you're doing now. I think it is so cool. We have all kinds of football camps in this country. I don't think we talk near enough, as I've said a thousand times, about our offensive linemen. Tell us about crafting linemen, how you got into it, how you've turned from player into a coach and CEO. <laughs> yeah, right. So, I mean, to, to give you a little background about, you know, crafting linemen and how things started. So, for me, you know, I Honestly, I, I honestly felt like I fell into this um, wow. because it, it, it wasn't something I said, OK, I definitely want to be a trainer. You know, um, I was coaching. I was coaching high school. Um, you know, I GA um, at FIU, Florida International University. Okay. And, you know, while I was coaching high school, you know, a lot of a lot of the kids was reaching out to me to work out outside of football or outside of you know, the, uh, the normal day to day practice. And, sure. you know, once I, once I started doing that, you know, people started reaching out to me. Oh man, I see you training this guy, this guy. And I said, yes, I'm training this guy. So more and more kids started reaching out to me, you know, um, and that's how things started to, to come about. And then eventually the high school kids and then the college kids, and then eventually the pro kids, the, uh, the pro guys started reaching out to me once they saw wow. what I was doing. Yeah, so, you know, so Super now, man, cool. I, yeah, so now I'm training, you know, a bunch of different guys, you know, a bunch of different athletes. And uh, this past year, man, I had uh, one of my guys went first round, uh, Tyler Smith, to the Dallas Cowboys. So, wow, Tyler great. Smith was one of your one of your guys you trained? Yep, one of my wow. guys from, for, the, for the combine, yep. Damn, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Super cool. So you're you're now getting into that that rare space where a couple of these young guys or these pros are starting to now come to you and, and seek you out as as a mentor and trainer. No, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um and, and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. 
you know, just to give my story and let them know that, you know, you, you can do all things, you know, as long as you put your mind to it. God, that's fantastic. Okay, so a couple of quick questions, and we'll do our two-minute drill with Torian Wilson, offensive lineman and now CEO of Crafting Lineman, who's turning out first-rounders. Who knew? Okay. <laughs> offensive lineman. I asked this of every position. Uh, some of the guys you played against in the NFL have been on the show. But offensive linemen, are they made or are they born? Um, I honestly feel they're made. And the reason why is because not all big boys are it, – it, it's not like the the skill players. You know, a lot of times it's just natural for them, you know, get up and run. Yeah. But for the big guys, you know, it's not natural for us to just get up off the couch and just, you know, just become something. So, you know, a lot of times you have to lean on your coaches or your trainers to make you – become that you know that that uh that top guy now on the other hand i'm not sure if his background but then you have some guys like trent williams you know tyron smith you know who just freak of natures you know i'm yeah. not sure how how they were when they was at the youth level but you know a lot of times they they kind of defeat the the science a little bit <laughs> yeah i know there's i'm thinking of a, one of my favorite guys uh, orlando pace I mean, oh, yeah. some of these some of these guys are just freaks of nature. They got it all. They're just, it, but I love that you answered that because I ask every position player. I just got done with Lova Tatupu, uh, the linebacker for the Seahawks, and I was like, he's like, man, I never thought about that. I said, linebackers are a little off, man. They're a little yeah. off in the head. Like, yeah. were you born that way, or do you just become? And he he loved it. And great answer. They're made. There's so much skill in alignment. So what's more important, the hands or the feet, for an yeah. OL guy? Oh. Oh, definitely the feet. You know, the, the feet has to, the feet have to get you to where you where you have to go to start the fight. You know, the hands, of course, is definitely important, but you can't do anything without your feet. You know, your feet has to get you to from point A to point B. Now, the hands yeah. we can teach that, and you know, different things like that. Oh my God, I love that offensive linemen are everywhere, just out there now, backpedaling somewhere. That is awesome, man. Okay, real quick, then the two-minute drill. Where does Torian Wilson want to be in five years? What do you want to be uh, doing? Man, five years. Have, it's a long have, time. Uh, yeah, five years. Have my uh, have my uh, lineman performance facility uh, where we're creating right uh, having having an enterprise within the enterprise. You know, because my biggest thing is not only do we want to train, but we also want to allow the financial literacy aspect of it you know we want to make sure that we're creating the camps the, for the youth uh we want to make sure we're in the community make sure we're giving back to the community as well so in five years man having this uh having this big lineman for, uh, performance facility you know that we've created an enterprise enterprise uh with god i love that man i love that good stuff and we anything we can do to support that, we will. I, I think we got to keep this game alive. We got to keep the young guys going. That is phenomenal. Okay, Tori and Wilson. Well, as we do with all of our guests, we do a quick two minute drill. It's meant to be fun. Give us a quick peek into your mind and your life and personality. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to hit you with some questions. No need to elaborate unless you want to. <laughs> but we have fun with this. So here we go. Inside okay. two minutes. Grass or turf. Grass. I love that you paused. <laughs> you yeah. had to think had about to, that. Yeah, I had to think about the heat. I had to, you know, <laughs> it's different. It's different. <laughs> that's that's cool. I love that. Okay, cats or dogs? Dogs. Kind of feeling you were a dog guy. Cats are rare on this show. <laughs> They're just rare. This one, not sure. Xbox, <laughs> PlayStation, PC, or who cares? <laughs> uh, I don't really play. I've stopped playing games for a while, man. I give it to my, I give it all to my nephews. But um, my last system that I had was an Xbox, so I guess I got to go with Xbox. Okay, yeah. If you get older, it's just no time for it anymore. Yeah, you're running a company. Okay. Exactly. Favorite movie? Torian Wilson's favorite movie. <sighs> favorite movie. Um, I'm I'm more I'm a, I'm a comedy guy, but I also so it it have to be between uh. 300 ah. um, or it'll have to be uh friday 
Oh, okay. Wow. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very nice. You're reaching back right there. For sure. Very nice. There's this little snapshot on you, a little side you in scene. <laughs> okay. All right. Most underrated teammate any level? Um, underrated teammate. Uh, I have two, actually. Uh, wow. So both at UCF. Um, one was our center, Joy, Joey Grant. He, wow. uh, he, moved, he moved from defensive line. And uh, he was one of the reasons why we, you know, why we made it to the Fiesta Bowl and won the Fiesta Bowl. Um, and the other is Joshua Reese, you know, um, who, to be honest, was just a maniac at, at receiver. He's another one, another reason why we won the Fiesta Bowl and uh, why we beat Louisville when there was number five in the country. Did I watch that game? <laughs> yeah, That's incredible, yeah, yeah. man. There's a couple of names. I love it. Okay, your greatest football achievement. Uh, greatest football achievement would have to be uh, two. Uh, <laughs> winning the Fiesta Bowl at UCF and then winning the AFC uh, championship at uh, with the Patriots. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice, man. That's right. I mean, I could have won an hour on your Patriot experience, but I didn't. Yeah. I, I know the sun's down out there in Florida. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, last question. Last question. We get you home to your family. Who plays Torian Wilson in a movie of your life? Oh, man. <laughs> um, this one's always good. One. good. That's a good one. I mean, I, I know he looks nothing like me, but uh, I would love Denzel Washington to play me. I can't tell you, Torian how many guys pick Denzel? <laughs> they all love Denzel. I love Denzel. Like those equalizers. Oh, man, I'm all about Denzel. But, man, he's the yeah. goat. You can have Denzel. I bet he might he might need to pack on some muscle to play you. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but man, he, he is the goat. He's ridiculous. Friends, everybody listening, and especially Torian, thank you so much for joining us. You can find Torian at craftinglineman.com. It sounds like his reputation continues to grow. He's turning out first rounders, folks. And then on Twitter at Crafting Lineman, where else can people find you, Torian, if they wanted to learn about what you're doing and, and hear what you're up to? Yeah, so, um, you know, there, what, what you said, uh, Twitter, Crafting Lineman. Uh, my Instagram is Crafting underscore Lineman. Uh, my website is CraftingLinemanFL.com. Oh, um, thank you. Yeah, so, so that's where you can find me. Thank you for correcting that. CraftingLinemanFL.com. Okay. Very good. Tori Wilson, thank you, my friend. This has been a real pleasure. I appreciate you buying out time out there on the East Coast late in the evening and talking to us about that offensive line. No, no problem. Thank you for having me. We'll, we'll have you on again. I'm going to chase you down when the combine comes up and find out who it is that I should be watching. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Thank you, my friend.